Hi everyone, this is Mr. Miller, and today's question is, what molecules are necessary for life? We've already explored a little bit about water and its importance to life, so let's take a look at our food today. And everybody knows you are what you eat, uh, so what does that actually mean? What are we? Well, you all know that the bread's got carbs, the bacon has some proteins in it, and there's lipids or fats in the mayonnaise, uh, there's some good nutrients like uh, carbohydrates in the lettuce and in the tomato. Um, what you may not have thought of is that because these items are made of cells, all cells have DNA or RNA, so those nucleic acids are in your food too. But what does food really provide us with? And the answer, of course, is it gives us the nutrients necessary for life. And I think that's an important thing to write in your notes. The nutrients can be inorganic compounds like sodium chloride or table salt or organic molecules like carbohydrates. To understand what these are you really have to go back to their chemistry and so as a quick review I think everyone here knows that matter is made up of tiny atoms and these are the very little building blocks that you can think of like uh, individual Legos. The elements have names like carbon and hydrogen oxygen, nitrogen, and although you can often think of them like these Bohr diagrams show with protons and neutrons in a nucleus surrounded by electrons, it's really just as easy to think of them as particles, very tiny particles that can bond to each other. There are 92 different naturally occurring elements and only four of them make up 96 percent of our body. So we'll spend most of our time with carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Molecules are made whenever two or more of those atoms are held together by a chemical bond. So everybody knows water is a molecule, and it's a molecule because the oxygen atom is bonded to two different hydrogens. Likewise, carbon dioxide is a molecule. It's made of one carbon atom, shown here in black, bonded to two different um, oxygen atoms. And carbon dioxide can be written simply as CO2. And finally, oxygen. Most everyone knows that the oxygen gas that we breathe is O2. And that's because there are two atoms of oxygen bonded together to make one molecule of oxygen gas. But why is oxygen an atom and a molecule? That's because if you look over here, oxygen can exist as one atom, but it doesn't like to. It likes to find other things to bond to, including itself, and so we often see oxygen in the air as O2, and sometimes three atoms of oxygen bind together, and that's known as ozone. Now, inorganic molecules, of course, are molecules that are not organic. One definition for them is they don't contain any carbon-hydrogen bonds, and they're usually very small. Important ones to our biology, water, of course. There's no carbon, no, hyd no hydrogen bonds in there. Salts, like sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, O2. Even though this has carbon in it, there is no hydrogen in it, so no carbon-hydrogen bonds. These inorganic molecules are important to life, but they're very tiny, and they don't have carbon-hydrogen bonds. So guess what? Organic molecules do have carbon, and they have carbon bonded to hydrogen atoms, and they're usually quite large. Do you know why life is based on the element carbon? Carbon is an important atom because it can make four bonds. It can bond to itself, so this carbon could bond to another carbon over here. It can bond to hydrogen, it can bond to oxygen. It's a very friendly atom and it makes lots of bonds which allows molecules to grow very, very large. So we call them macromolecules. Makes things like DNA. Here's an example of our fuel molecules. Fuels that are called fossil fuels are all basically hydrocarbons. They have no elements in them but hydrogen and carbon. And notice natural gas or methane is the simplest. It has one carbon atom. Each carbon atom has four bonds. That's these lines here. Propane has three carbon atoms. More hydrogens around it, of course. Butane, like you'd find in a Bic lighter, looks like this with four carbon atoms in a chain. 
and I think you're getting the pattern here, carbon can continue to link together. Gasoline contains octane, which has eight carbon atoms. Diesel fuel, a little bit longer carbon chain, motor oil, etc. Even plastics, long chains of carbons. But that's not our fuel for our bodies. It's the fuel for our cars, but not us. Organic molecules that we use include carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Those four are the important organic nutrients that we're going to focus on today. So, a little review. Sugar, organic or inorganic? It's got carbon, it's got hydrogen, it's organic. Water, no carbon, not organic. DNA, living things make it, it's organic. Carbon dioxide, CO2, even though it's got a carbon, there's no hydrogen, so it's inorganic. Methane, CH4, oxygen, O2. Cotton and wood, well, they're both made by living things. And I should have told you earlier that the original definition of organic was organisms make these things. So plants make cotton. Well, that cotton is, we find out now, we can make it in a lab. A plant didn't have to make it. And so we just stick with the definition that there's still lots of carbons and hydrogens in these organic compounds. Now, many of our organic nutrients are polymers. Polymers are made out of repeating units called monomers, or these single units. I'll give you an example. Our most common sugar is a monosaccharide, simple sugar, called glucose. I'm sure you've heard of it. It looks like this ring structure with carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. If two of these bonded together, you get a disaccharide. And if more than two bond together, if you notice this O atom is holding these two glucoses together, and this one is bonded to a third, to a fourth, etc., you can string together a hundred or more of these glucose molecules and make a giant molecule, a polymer, called a polysaccharide. So glucose is a monomer that can make many, many different kinds of polysaccharides. So let's look at a little bit of detail of each organic compound. First of all, the first type is the carbohydrates. You know that pasta has carbohydrates in it and sugars have carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates usually end in ose, the sugars do or glucose, fructose, galactose. But carbohydrates also include starches and cellulose, which is what plant cell walls are made of. Um, in the general public, we call it fiber, but it's truly cellulose. The function of a carbohydrate is quick energy. This is what our cell uses for cell respiration. The elements you find in these uh, carbohydrates, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just those three. And it's in the ratio of for every one carbon, you have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if you notice, if you count it on this glucose molecule, which makes a ring structure, there's six carbon atoms. There's also six oxygen atoms, and there's twice as many hydrogens, or 12. So the formula for glucose is, easy way to write this, C6, H12O6, and glucose is the monomer that builds larger carbohydrates like these polysaccharides shown down here. Starch is just a glucose bonded to a glucose bonded to a glucose hundreds of times. Cellulose is a different type of bond, but because it's a different bond, your body can break down starch to glucose for energy. But you cannot break down the cellulose that's in plant cell walls, so we call it fiber and it just goes right through your system cleans you out, so to speak. And your body stores your glucose in muscles with glycogen, which is just a polysaccharide made of many glucose monomers. Another type of organic compound are lipids. Lipids include the fats, the oils, the waxes, steroids, settle down girls. And really what we found out is that lipids are chemicals that are organic and they simply don't dissolve in water. That's pretty much their definition. So they're nonpolar, we would say. 
The functions of our fats and oils mainly are stored energy. This is how you store energy long term. But it's also a way that we can insulate the body and uh, lipids make up our cell membrane. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Just like a carbohydrate, lipids are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But you'll notice they're not in a CH2O ratio. In fact, there's very few oxygen atoms. Here's a couple right here. Lots of C's and H's. The building block are two different kind of words, fatty acids and glycerol. Here is a fatty acid. See this brown area here? If this was a free molecule, this would be a carboxyl functional group. This molecule is a bunch of carbons and hydrogens, long hydrocarbon, and they call that a fatty acid. And three of these fatty acids, one, two, three, are attached to this green molecule of three carbons that's known as a glycerol. It's a three-carbon alcohol. So if you hook up a glycerol and three fatty acids, you made a fat. Another type of organic molecule that's very important in our body are the proteins. Proteins are, consist of things like actin and myosin, which make up our muscle. Tendons that hold our muscle to the bone. Hair is made of a molecule called keratin, which is a protein. Skin has two major proteins, collagen for toughness and elastin for elasticity. And enzymes that actually do the jobs and speed up the chemical reactions in our body. And finally, antibodies, which fight off infection, are made out of proteins. So in essence, proteins are a very diverse group of organic compounds that do pretty much all the jobs in our body. Functions then include structure, like your skin and your bone. Enzymes speed up the reactions. Hormones send messages from one part of, cell, of the cells to the other. And antibodies, which are fighting off infection. The elements you find in a protein, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and also nitrogen and sulfur. The building blocks, you've probably heard of this, are amino acids, and it turns out there's 20 different types of amino acids with names like glycine, arginine, methionine, and it turns out a protein is a huge macromolecule. A protein is a polymer that's made up of at least 100 amino acids bonded together, but one protein molecule is made of hundreds of those. Finally, nucleic acids. DNA and its cousin, RNA. Nucleic acids have a major function in that they are the genes that contain the instructions in our body to make proteins. The elements that make up nucleic acids, again, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but we're adding nitrogen and phosphorus. The building blocks are called nucleotides, and they are made of structures that we'll get into a little more detail later. The two types of nucleic acids are deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, which is a double-stranded, double spiral or helix molecule, and ribonucleic acid, which is a single-stranded molecule, and that helps in the process of the DNA coding for the production of proteins. So if you would, Take this self-quiz and answer these questions in your notebook. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.